Hi everyone, I'm Tim Spector from the Zoe Health Study and I hope you've all enjoyed a very healthy, fun, restful, festive season so far. Now, today, um, as well as noting that COVID has probably stopped its Christmas surge, uh, although uh, not colds, I'll be looking at all the brilliant things we've achieved over the last year together and looking forward to what we can achieve in 2023. So let's dive in, shall we? Now, at the start of 2022, which to me seems ages ago, um, this time last year, we were in the midst of a huge Omicron wave. Thanks to you, however, we helped to identify those symptoms which had changed from previous variants. Uh, and that really helped everyone know what was going on. And if you remember, people were also isolating over Christmas and New Year and COVID levels were hitting uh, a peak, which we thought we wouldn't get there again. Uh, but we did actually in January, um, uh, they went up and they continued to fluctuate at these levels throughout the first quarter of the year. And if you remember, we were still called the Zoe COVID study. And at the start of 2022, our team leapt into action and created the app, which uh, has led to many groundbreaking discoveries in symptoms, as well as monitoring the spread of uh, COVID and localized outbreaks. Now, as the government moved away from focusing on COVID, so did we in our research. And now we're fully funded by Zoe and researching so much more than we were before. Now, although COVID was still at high levels, we thought we could still use our amazing technology to tackle even more diverse health conditions beyond Zoe, beyond COVID. And that's really how the Zoe Health Study was born. And just this year, we've received more than 100 million health reports from over 1.1 million contributors and have had over 200,000 of you reporting every single day. I think that's amazing. Now, we're still monitoring COVID, of course, but we're also monitoring your daily health reports for all the symptoms you experience every day. And we're the only people bringing you these real-time updates on flu and cold-like illnesses, which are reaching record highs this season. Uh, so we're doing great stuff together. Now, let's uh, look at what COVID's been doing throughout the year, really, uh, we saw really these fluctuations. But as you can see from January 22, these have been at pretty high levels, which we would have been really worried about uh, in previous years. And the maximum number of cases ever recorded was on July the 10th of this year at 354,000 new cases a day. And it looks like rates... Um, currently, which I thought might get back to those record levels, are starting to uh, tail off. And hopefully, um, we'll see this more clearly by the end of the year. But that's my particular prediction. We still need a bit more data from you to be sure, though. The same can't be said, sadly, for flu cases. These are now reaching record highs, having more than doubled in two weeks uh, and on course for setting uh, the NHS for its worst flu season in a decade, really what everyone was worried about for the last couple of years, looks like it is hitting us and this is causing uh, deaths as well as lots of hospitalizations. We can't separate flus from uh, other viruses at the moment, uh, although we're working on that to see if we, uh, we might be able to do that in the future. So we combine them at the moment, but you can see that the, the combination of colds and flus are far exceeding uh, the already high numbers of COVID cases at the moment. Uh, so there's lots of infection around uh, and it's really, really useful for you to keep logging how you feel every day in the health study app. Now, your daily reports help us track these colds, the symptoms, spread infection and many other diseases. And 
this year, as well as logging your health data, you also had an opportunity to take part in lots of other fascinating studies. I'm going to mention a few of them. And of course, the blood pressure study was what uh, we started uh, in the app in August as our first big branch out into other areas. And uh, we know how important blood pressure is as a monitor of general cardiac health, how many people in the population have uh, abnormal blood pressures. And we asked you to start taking uh, your own blood pressure with a monitor and 51,000 of you got involved. And we found that as your age increases, so does your blood pressure. And we also looked at, at the importance of adhering to your medication had a big effect. And we also showed that previous COVID infection didn't seem to affect your blood pressure. And, and that was contrary to what some other people had uh, believed. Now, what was really important, and you can see from this graph here, is we found that people who were consuming higher levels of potassium in their diet had lower, significantly lower blood pressure. And in fact, eating these potassium rich foods, which uh, you can see listed here, but include nuts, leafy greens, beans, and even Marmite, uh, turned out to be more important, give a bigger blood lowering, uh, blood pressure lowering effect than cutting out salt, which is what we're all told to do. So it looks like eating the good stuff is better than reducing so salt. And I think they, these are really fascinating insights that we're going to be exploring even further in the new year. Now, uh, the next big study was the big diet study, which we launched uh, in October. Uh, 104,000 of you took part. We asked you to fill in a survey uh, so we could take a look at your gut health and regular diet patterns, as well as the COVID data, to better understand how they link to the development of diseases like cancer which we know you're interested in. Now, a good diet increases your friendly gut microbes, which can strengthen your immune system and improve as, as well how many treatments work. And that's particularly true for cancer, which we've done some work in ourselves. And this uh, linking the food data with uh, things like the blood pressure allowed us to find this key finding of potassium rich foods for blood pressure. But we also found that 40% of you don't eat enough, enough fiber. Okay, so the British population as a whole really doesn't get anything like the amount of fiber we really need. We know this is important for many things, not just cancer, but also hearts, heart and aging, and um, also related to weight. And although we found that drinking alcohol can be related to increased blood pressure, as well as eating red meat. Age and body mass index, that's levels of obesity, are twice as likely to cause high blood pressure than alcohol and sodium consumption. So we're sort of putting these things into some ranking order. Obviously, everything has some small effect, but some things uh, like sodium consumption are rather minor compared to these other factors. And this gave us a great base of your diet habits, which we can now use to analyze alongside your reports uh, in the uh, other studies, such as the Big If study, which we launched next. So the Big If study was the final big study of the year, and over 145,000 of you got involved, making this the largest community fasting experiment in the world. And we were blown away by your keenness to participate, uh, and we asked you to eat normally for week one, reporting your mood, energy, hunger levels, daily symptoms, and how many times you ate a day. Uh, then in that second week, we asked you to eat within a 10 hour window and keep reporting your mood and hunger, energy level and symptoms. And that's been amazingly successful. Just And if you haven't joined up yet, you've just got a few days left until December the 31st to join up and if you get in before that date you can carry on and all you got to do is download the uh, free uh, zoe health app today and once you've joined you as i said 
um, you're, you're in with us. But after that date, we won't be running it. So um, we're still working on the main results and we're going to play those back in the new year to you. But we did find that those people who were doing this intermittent fasting snacked less than those who weren't uh, doing it at all. So it does seem to affect other behaviors rather than simply the uh, resting your gut, which uh, we know uh, has benefits, which we're going to be talking about. But this big difference in snacking uh, is quite important. Um, and we found that those that had a later eating window tended to eat many more snacks than those with an early eating window. And we also found that those who skipped their breakfast also tend to snack slightly more, suggesting eating breakfast uh, may lower your need to snack later in the day. Now, we're working out whether the, how important these factors are, but we do know that snacking itself does account for about uh, a quarter of the calories on, for the average uh, British person. But uh, a really exciting finding, a benefit, was that after taking part in the Big If study for two weeks, uh, the majority of you experienced less bloating symptoms uh, if you had that at the beginning. And you can see this in the graph. Bars to the left of zero are those who experienced an improvement, and this may indicate better gut health after the period of intermittent fasting. And we're looking into why this is, but it's really interesting to see that uh, intermittent fasting can reduce bloating, and it'd be really interesting to see if it does other things as well. Maybe it affects um, uh, reflux, maybe it affects uh, other of your gastro symptoms as well as the mood and hunger, which uh, we're going to be giving you more insight on. And all these, all this will be played back to you as well as perhaps we're giving you new features in the app. Now, let's talk about um, what's going to be launching in January. This is the habit tracker, which allows you to log new habit goals and track your progress. And we recently ran a poll on social media and 40% of you told us that you're planning on developing some new habits this new year. No big surprise there. However, science shows us the, re the resolutions which focus on really big changes over a long period of time often just don't work. So we want to investigate this, uh, the impact that small lifestyle changes can have on your mood, energy, hunger, sleep quality, and daily health symptoms. And this is a brand new feature in the app, which we, uh, will allow you to track one of seven health changes you might be interested in uh, following in the new year, uh, develop relating to diet, sleep, movement, stress management, uh, etc. So do look out for the invite on your inbox. Make sure your app is up to date. So you'll see it when it goes live. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more about the psychology of New Year's resolutions, why big changes tend not to work, uh, as many of you already know, check out our podcast coming out next week with my colleague Sarah Berry on the so Zoe Science and Nutrition podcast, which is completely free. Now, next year, we've also got a huge study on gut health coming up. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, can't give any more info quite yet but also bring you more insights into the Big If study, which our scientists are currently working on. And we're so grateful for you logging so brilliantly, uh, as always taking part in these, these studies. And it's really exciting to get you involved in loads more uh, and harness this amazing power of the community to tackle um, the biggest health problems we're facing today. Uh, and as always, we love to hear your comments. If you've got any great ideas for future studies, we should be running on the app. I'd absolutely love to hear them, okay? So um, in conclusion, uh, we've achieved so much together in 2022. Uh, we've um, had amazing findings in blood pressure, uh, diet, to how intermittent fasting can benefit health, and we're looking forward to involving you in many more studies uh, in 23. So 
do keep logging, really important, even if we're not uh, running a specific study. This helps to give us constant data on these symptoms and spread of so many illnesses, colds, flus, et cetera, not just COVID. And we're just about the only ones in the world we think monitoring this. So the more of you that log this, the better our estimates will be. And this coming year, it's likely that my video updates uh, might change in format a bit, uh, frequency, et cetera. So do uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Uh, really important so you're notified when we release a new video and do keep your app up to date so you can access all the latest features and we'll continue to send us the weekly newsletters with the updates. So finally, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. It's the way uh, we get known. Share the app with friends and family, support science and keep logging. And very importantly, have a very happy new year from me and everyone at Zoe. And also, I want to introduce you to my little friend. This is Cagatio, who is the Catalan uh, cross between a Santa and a Christmas tree. And his gut health is very important because every year he has to poo out presents for children. So let's keep Cagatio very healthy in the next year and have a fantastic new year. Bye.